Well, I'm going to get started by just congratulating our Illini uh, soccer team for uh, making it to the next round and heading off to Chapel Hill. Uh, Coach Rayville's done a great job with, a, uh, with our program and uh, happy for her and uh, happy for our uh, soccer team heading on out to Chapel Hill. A um, little recap on the football game. Um, you know, again, the game of football, uh, you've got to make plays. And Minnesota made more plays than we did in that football game, and they ended up winning the, winning the football game on us. I thought our kids played with good effort. Uh, they did exactly what we asked them to do, but when that time comes to make a play, we either didn't make it, we either overthrew it, didn't make the catch, didn't make the interception, or missed the tackle. But uh, that's the game of football, and that's the way the game of football is made up. And uh, so you have to give credit to Minnesota. They made the plays. We didn't make them. After going over game film, do you have a better idea of how you're going to get involved with the offense this week? Well, you know, I, every week I, I sit with the offense on Mondays, usually Monday morning, uh, to watch, you know, game tape or, uh, you know, our opponent's tape. And then just give them what I see maybe they're doing defensively. And this is something that we might be able to help attack a little bit. So I've been doing more and more of that. Um, and, uh, you know, I just got done from be meeting with them. And then this afternoon I'll spend time with the defense and then also the special teams. So we just talked a little bit, uh, went over some uh, short yardage plays uh, that uh, we definitely need to uh, see if we can try to secure uh, to be able to pick up uh, some short, short yardage uh, gains. How do you evaluate Nate's gameplay so far this season? Um, you know, I think uh, it's been – just because, and I want people to understand this, any position that you play, especially a quarterback, when you go from being, a, being the guy, brand new in the system, 15 practices of spring football, goes through camps, the guy during camp gets hurt in the first game, and then gets immediately gone for possibly about four weeks. And then he has to come back. And then he takes on a Louisiana Tech uh, team because he's, he's uh, you know, maybe not – Totally healthy, but he wants to do it for the football team. He realizes he might be the best guy suited to do that. Comes in, gets stinged up a little bit. That At that time, we get him back. He's been uh, fully healthy now for about two weeks. Gets dinged up in the Michigan football game. Um, so, you know, again, I think uh, with him being first year in this system, I think he's done a good job. I wish I'd say that he, he's completed every pass that we've asked him to, to complete. If it comes down to a playing I, th I think he's done a good job. If it comes down to leadership, I think he's done an excellent job. Our players buy into what uh, Nate says, and buy into what uh, Nate does, and the way he works, so our players understand that, uh, that he'll give us everything we need as a quarterback. Coach, talk a little bit about the thing that's got some of us confused about, first and second down by one coach and, and the calls on third down by another coach. Is that normal? Is that that's something I'd never heard of before, and I, I just wonder whether there's something in the scheming that would that would make the guy that called the first two plays want to call the third one because maybe he's setting something up. No, it's just there. We we call the play on Tuesday. Everything's set on Tuesday. You have a game plan. Everybody's heard of a game plan. You take your game plan. Our Billy Gonzalez is our as our offensive coordinator in charge of third and long and third and medium. He sets up, he studies, he looks at that thing from Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's his, that's his baby. That's what he needs to know. Okay? He determines the type of calls he thinks will be successful and presents it to the offensive staff. As the offensive staff looks at it, Coach Beatty included, we look at the calls, we determine which ones we think will be successful in order, and then based on what possible coverage we could get, based on what look they might give us. So Billy's got those calls down there for third and long and third and medium. And at that time, he's got it on his chart. And he knows, based on what the staff felt throughout the week, would be the best calls for us to have at that time. So he just calls it in from the sidelines. So, but he doesn't have anything to do with the first two downs? First and second. All, all, of them have, all of them do the first two downs. Chris just calls the first two downs. Yeah, we do it. We every game plan is split up, just as it is on defense. You have a red zone coach, you have a third down and long coach, 
You have a short yardage and goal line coach, and they are the general managers of that area. They study it. That's what they study as hard as they can. And then we all come together, and then we determine what would be the best for us to be and what we need to practice so we can be successful doing. Uh, watch the film together and all that stuff, but they are the general managers of those situations. How's Jonathan? Is... Look good, look better this morning. You know, it's not been cleared, but uh, you know, we're, it's a day by day thing. He's no longer in the sling. And uh, you know, we're, we're hoping for the best uh, for this weekend. Mason has been one of the big bright spots. Well, I mean, this can't say enough for him. Did you see something in the team that thought he'd be this good this early? Is he surprised? Well, I mean, you know, any time an 18-year-old comes in and steps in and plays Big Ten football as well as he does, I think it, it, it surprised us all. I think Mike's Fatina for a young man that also is 18 years old and might be three days younger than Monheim uh, played a good football game this last week. I think the people that surround him, the – front line and the secondary that all help those freshmen when they're out there playing, hey, it speaks highly for them. Uh, Minnesota's got a good offense, and they were able to hold Minnesota's offense to 300 yards. I think they had 78 yards passing, and, and you had two true freshmen. I, I don't know who else in, in BCS football is playing with two true freshmen at linebacker, and there might be. I don't know. I don't care. I know we are, and it speaks – it speaks highly for what our defense is doing to make those young men successful. We've gotten to um, listen to Mason after games now a few times, and and he speaks um, like a like a, a he almost has a junior senior voice in terms of leadership. Very mature. And yeah, very mature. And, and I mean, he he's a guy that as you move forward, I mean, he will be he'll be the uh, if he won't be a captain, I'd be surprised. Uh, is that is that your impression? I, I'm, I'm proud of this freshman class. We have a, a lot of Masons. And uh, a lot of guys that step up and uh, don't always act like they're 18 years old. Some of them do, of course, all of us do. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the way that those guys have come in and played. Uh, the Tico Pals, the Viangelo Bentley, the, uh, you know, you can name all of the, the ones that we've had uh, that had to step in and play as freshmen. And they are mature players, and that's probably the reason why they're playing it as 18-year-olds. Is there something you see in recruiting that you can find more of those guys that can make an impact early, or is it just kind of roll of the dice? No, I, I think it's something that you see and you look for. You look for guys that, that, that want to be great. You look for guys that are willing to do what it takes to be the best in everything they do, not just football. You know, Mason Monheim's a 4.0 student. Mike Svetina was a starting uh, leading scorer on his basketball team and a 4.0 student. Both of them right now, I, don't, I think they're – Got maybe one B on their uh, uh, on their grades right now. I mean, there's those type of kids. Viangelo Bentley comes from a program that is just outstanding, and uh, you know understands that hey, football's it. But so is academics, and so is you know being a responsible adult. As you look at Purdue, you know, what, what cause for concerns? I, I mean, I think very athletic. You know, they've played. Uh, that win last, last week was very, very big. Uh, and the way they did it, uh, being on the road, we all know how it is to play in Iowa City, um, and then to go down and score and kick that field goal to win that football game. And Robert Marv, who I played against two years ago, uh, and, and he directing that team down the field I thought was outstanding. Defensively, they've got a defensive front that's very active. They play a lot of guys. Uh, they play a lot of man coverage uh, and do do some things extremely well on defense. So, um, you know, I, again, it'll be another challenge for us. And I think each week you just step out there on that football field in the Big Ten, every game's a challenge. If Purdue has one major weakness, what is it? One major weakness. Probably more uh, um, up front. They've given up a couple sacks and uh, given up some pressure on their quarterbacks. I would say probably would be one of the uh, – uh, the things that uh, they haven't done quite as well as they'd like to. You said up front, you, you focused on that short yarded situations. What are you doing this week to try and improve that? What plays well, are you? Yeah, exactly. You talked about toughness and then the shoots and things like that. You yeah, that? definitely. I mean, it's the same things that, w that we've, we've been working on and trying to get better at, and we'll 
Um, you know, if it, if it means some personnel changes, uh, then that's what it means. We're going to have to get some, uh, maybe a different guy in there uh, on the line or in the backfield. Tico? No. I, mean, I, see, I saw the number wrong. You could see one of our D linemen back there, but not Tico. No. I wasn't sure. I got a question off uh, in another area. I'm I'm told you have four that you can count back four players in January that you could bring in. Am I correct on that? That you could bring in four players that would count back toward the previous class. In yes, January? sir. Exactly. When I, when I ask that question, does that mean junior college or high school or either? Either. Either both. Yep. Okay. That's what I want. As far as what is, what is your comment about junior college help at this point? How, do you, how serious are you about? I mean, you got 19 players and only one's junior college so far that I can see. Right. Uh, well, I mean, again, there isn't a bunch of junior college players that are committed, but uh, yes. there is not. not. Not right now. They're in the process of finishing their season, national championships going on about in the next couple of weeks. Um, but, you know, I think it's something, and to be honest with you, we've, we, we are very active uh, right now um, trying to find the best players, junior college or high school, but we have the capabilities to really sign 13 uh, with this in January. So we could have 13 players coming in here in January due to graduated seniors. We have players that are on our football team right now that have graduated. Shante Williams, Glenn Foster. Um, we have those guys plus the four, which equals 13. We, right. We could have 13. Right now we have seven that have committed to us and coming in in January. But most of those are high school players. Most of them. How important is that for you to get well, them in? Well, I think it's huge. There's no no question about it. This home game, of course, be the last for a lot of these seniors. Talk about, I guess, their importance there. Very important. Uh, you know, I, I've been very, very lucky being at the, the three at the University of Toledo, and we try to make it as special as we can by bringing the family families out, uh, walking towards the scoreboard so there's highlights of them being shown uh, things that we talked about uh, each one of our players gave a speech to the football team back in at Rantoul of course that was videotaped uh, they were asked questions uh, about themselves about what makes them tick who their heroes are things like that and that's what this day is all about we're going to have 21 young men that are going to walk through we've got a couple uh, players that uh, um, their eligibilities aren't up, uh, walk-on players, but but they might not play their their senior year. So I, I would I, I ask them if they would like to walk with that senior class, uh, a Bo Sullivan, um, a Cayman Mitchell, uh, are two of the names. And why not? I mean, they deserve it just as much as anybody else does. They've been here for four years. They're going to graduate and uh, they can walk with their seniors. I'd love to have them back next year, but that's going to be up to them to determine if they want to come back. So I, I believe it's a special day, and I want it to be a special day, not just for our seniors, but for their families. And of course, you want to get them out of here on a win. Oh, no question. I mean, no question. So does this team. Exactly right. Would you be showing any of that video on the board? Well, that's in the process of still being talked about. We did it the other place it came from. Any uh, questions from the phone lines for uh, Coach Beckman? Oh, here we go. All right. Anything else in the room before we go? Thank you, Thanks, guys.